so good evening everyone at the outside i would like to thank uh, dr sk pal sir for giving such a wonderful introduction and it is my privilege to uh, share this uh, information on webinar about how to avoid complications and manage complications in perth thank you so much sir so i'll start with the lecture so this lecture is tract loss in pcnl now the issues that we discuss when we issue, when we discuss about tract loss is that how does it happen what are the steps during which it can happen what damage it can do the, to the procedure what are the ways to prevent it and what are the ways to rectify the loss as sir was telling just now now how does it happen it happens during the initial learning curve and mostly by an over enthusiastic surgeon with an equally over enthusiastic assistant if there is a transient loss of consciousness or a transient loss of attention this complication is bound to happen with almost everyone who is starting pcnl so you see the dilatation was achieved with a screw dilator and suddenly the surgeon is finding that the wire is not going into the system wire is circling out outside the kidney and he is faced with this dilemma now what are the steps during which it can happen now it can happen when your initial tract is oblique and wire is not getting parked so if you see this video you see there is an anterior this is the anterior calyx and this is the posterior calyx the puncture has been made with an anterior calyx and the wire is going an, along an oblique tract so this wire inherently is not very stable and suppose you start dilating uh, this wire obviously when you are uh, when you are experienced you can manage it but in the initial learning curve one should avoid uh, dilating a oblique tract one should be very careful that the tract should be straight so that you don't feel any difficulty of wire coming out during the dilatation process now there are some systems where wire parking length is short now if you see the system if you see the system the wire is parked into the pelvis and such wire if you are using a short parking length and you are dilating this wire especially if the, if the wire is is slippery or floppy or is, or uh, the hydrophilic wire then there is likelihood that this wire may slip during your dilatation process and you need to have a stiffer wire for doing this then as sir said when you are experienced you are full of your confidence and suddenly you feel that the wire is not required and you do your pcnl without wire in place so this is a scenario where where a confident surgeon is doing nephroscopy he starts seeing the stone and if you see the ampulla sheath size is matching that of stone and he feels that the stone can come out he suddenly picks up the stone and starts pulling the over enthusiastic assistant loses the grip and with the over enthusiastic surgeon the ampulla is out so this is the most common scenario so you have to do your procedure carefully to avoid such unpleasant happening so what are the damage that it can do to the procedure obviously it can increase your over time because you would require to plan a repeat access sometimes there is failure of access because if you see this extra position of contrast is happening and all your system becomes messy suddenly which was going very smooth sometimes hematoma and urinoma formation may also happen so what are the ways now to prevent it the first and the foremost way that you can prevent is to have a correct calicial entry and a straight tract which leads directly into the ureter and upper calyx so if you see this video uh, you you can appreciate this is the posterior calyx and this is the pelvis and this is the anterior calyx so you have punctured the posterior calyx the wire goes straight into the pelvis now you have to adjust your needle in such a manner that this wire is going into the ureter can you appreciate this so the wire is into the ureter now this tract is straight and it is stable tract so even if you dilate this even in the initial burning curve it is unlikely that the wire is going to come out similarly if if you have tried this the wire is not going into the ureter then the next best uh, parking lot is the upper calyx so again you see the wire is not going into the system you have directly parked the wire into the upper calyx this becomes the second preferable uh, parking lot where the wire has got adequate length and you would avoid uh, losing the tract during dilatation process now if uh, the second second trick that you can use is that you can use a stiffer wire like j tip uh, wire if you if you are not able to pass the wire into the system this is a j tip wire which has a stiff nitinol core 
So this wire is relatively fixed into the pelvis. And even if you dilate this, this is just to show a method where I'm dilating it with a crude technique. So if you do this crude technique, because the wire is stable, the wire is not coming out. So you can get away with this uh, problem or track loss if you use a stiffer wire, if the wire is not gone into the ureter. Now, the best way to prevent it is to have a working wire and a safety wire arrangement. So what does this mean? This means that you have to have two wires into the ureter. One wire you can use as a safety wire and the other wire you can use as a working wire. So even accidentally, if the working wire comes out, you can still go and have your system intact with the, uh, with the uh, safety wire. I just reduce the volume. Now you see how I do it. You, normally when you puncture, you dilate this tract with an elkin needle. It has a six French inner needle and a nine French cannula. So once you put this alkin cannula, the second wire can be put directly and negotiated into the ureter. Now you can appreciate there are two wires into the ureter. I've taken out the alkin cannula and one wire I've started dilating. So in this scenario, you have one wire which is permanently parked into the ureter. And the second part is there inside your nephroscope sheath. So even if this, if you require to remove the wire, you can remove the wire and you will have the comfort of one wire remaining into the ureter at any point of time. So in any scenario, even if you encounter track loss, you can use the second wire and come directly into the system again. So this is called working wire, safety wire arrangement, and this is the safest bit to avoid and prevent this complication. Now, the third thing how to prevent is obviously ask your assistant to hold the ampla sheet, especially when you are removing the stone fragments, because some stone fragments are, uh, the size of the fragments are more and you can exert your jerk. So the assistant has to be very careful that he has to hold this uh, ampla and has to be attentive while the surgeon is retrieving the fragments rather than when he is using the nephroscopy. Now, what are the ways to rectify it? It is not a big issue. If you are confident enough, if, if the uh, during initial dilatation or during initial access, if you encounter track loss, you can repeat an access. And repeat access can also be done when track loss has happened during nephroscopy, provided the procedure was smooth. So if, if your procedure is going smooth and there is no much bleeding and suddenly you find that your system has, uh, you have lost the track, you can, you can plan a repeat access also. However, if you find that the system was turbulent, you were encountering bleeding and suddenly you have faced with this track loss, you can do a stage access as Pulsar was telling initially. It's always better to live and fight another day rather than to, you know, uh, subject yourself to an unwanted territory. Now, I would just like to show a case. Now, this, this is a case, you know, where we, my resident had only already planned a track. So this tract is the procedure was going smooth and he called me at a time when he suddenly he did a nephroscopy and found that there is no system. So this was the point when I came, I did nephroscopy and obviously you can see in this video that uh, uh, the tract is not there in the picture. Now, how do you encounter, how do you manage when the system is not bleeding and you can have a chance for repeat access? So this is the real question. So this was the stone in the system into the pelvis. You can see there is one calyx here. There was one calyx here. Obviously, when you did an RGP, uh, this system is not filling, probably because it has cut off now. And there is an ampla sheet which is there somewhere outside the system. Now, what I usually do is that there is a 20 centimeter uh, puncture needle that we normally use in PCNL. So, in such scenario, you don't remove your ampla sheet, but use an extra long alkyl needle, which is 26 centimeter commonly available, or which is 30 centimeter also that is commonly available. So in this video, you see this ampla sheath is lying outside the kidney and this alkan needle is placed just inside the alkan needle and when and by putting contrast into the system, you can puncture this needle. The advantage of this needle is that this needle is long than your ampla sheath. If you use the regular uh, uh, puncture needle, you will find that you'll encounter lesser uh, space to negotiate the tip of the nephroscope. So here you can see when this, the extra long needle is punctured directly into the system, you can uh, see that the contrast starts, the fluid comes from the alkyl needle. You can ensure that your tract is already uh, made into the correct calyx. You can park your wire again and directly dilate this tract to uh, encounter the same uh, nephroscopy that you were going before. So now the take home message is that 
yeah. you know, track loss is obviously encountered by everyone. It usually happens in the early learning curve. So you have to become careful initially, as well as uh, even when your learning curve is over, this track loss may happen, but uh, it's not a serious issue. Safety wire, working wire arrangement virtually rules it out, but this uh, requires some extra time. So if you are in the early learning curve, it is always better. I would encourage all initial PCNL learners to have a safety wire, working wire arrangement because it virtually rules out this complication. Now, when there is a straight track, you dilate, dilate it with a stiff wire, that is a JTEP guide wire to prevent loss. You can obviously repeat access. This is equally safe. And suppose the procedure was safe and it was going smooth, then you can re-establish track with an extra long puncture needle. And this can easily rectify this complication and you can manage this case. So with this, uh, thank you so much for uh, patiently listening to this lecture on uh, track loss during PCNL.